Um, yep, all yours. Go ahead. Thank you, Andrea. Um, all right. Okay, good morning, everybody, or good, e good evening, depending on where you're located today. Um, for me, it's morning, um, so good evening for everybody on the other, in the other hemisphere. Um, my name is Jenna Matson. I am a um, Salesforce Marketing Cloud, um, uh, Senior Salesforce Marketing Cloud Engineer at DEG Digital, linked by ISOBAR. We're part of the, uh, the Densu Network. Um, I am a um, agency engineer and I've been working on the agency side my entire career. Um, so I've seen a, uh, uh, gotten a broad exposure to um, Exact Target and Marketing Cloud um, throughout my career, um, starting in 2012 in Exact Target. Um, um, however, I've been working in email since um, 2007, the year of the iPhone. Um, so if you guys remember that one. Um, I'm also the social admin at howtosfmc.com. Uh, we're a group that uh, got together recently in order to um, um, support, enhance, and, um, and um, nurture the community around um, Salesforce Marketing Cloud, um, specifically um, um, you know, anybody that's looking for help and that's new to the community or, um, or mid-level that wants to um, uh, be supported and um, promoted, um, come seek us out there. We're happy to help you. Um, I'm also a certified Salesforce Marketing Cloud Specialist and a certified Salesforce Marketing Cloud Consultant and hope to be a developer soon after I take my test tomorrow. <laughs> So what we're going to be talking about today is tracking, and um, we're going to be talking about the basic tracking inside the marketing cloud. Um, there is a lot available to you here, so um, there's a lot of things to consider. So first, we're going to talk about all the different things that can be tracked inside the marketing cloud. Then we're going to talk about how it's tracked. We're going to talk about the WAC, which is the Web Analytics Connector, or we're going to get a little bit whacked out. Uh, then we're going to talk about staying fresh and clean um, with some data hygiene uh, techniques. And then um, we're going to breeze over some high-level reporting um, um, that's available to you in the marketing cloud. And we'll leave some time for questions and answers at the end here. All right. So what can be tracked in the marketing cloud? First off, um, I'm going to start by saying, really, why are we sending um, marketing? You know, I mean, we want people to convert or to purchase something or to, um, you know, um, take an action. Um, so if it can't be tracked, should we be sending it? You know, so just get yourself that question right off. Um, so we're going to try to track everything that we send out of the marketing cloud, right? Um, and what can be tracked whenever we send um, items from the marketing cloud, and we're going to talk specifically around emails today, are opens. Um, that's done with a tracking pixel, and we're going to get, go into a deep dive about that in just a few minutes here. Uh, we're going to talk about clicks, um, how alias tags are, um, provide you friendly, friendly uh, link names. Uh, we're going to talk about um, impressions and uh, dynamic impression regions. Um, that's for tracking your content. Uh, we're going to be going over uh, conversion tracking and how that's uh, configured inside the marketing cloud. We're also going to be Discussing bounces and the different bounce types, hard bounces, soft bounces, block bounces, um, unsubscribes, complaints, and in the complaints, we're going to uh, talk about feedback loops briefly. So first off, let's talk about opens. Um, there is, um, in the first place, what, when you send an email, what, what do you want everybody to do? You want, that you want them to open it, right? So we want to be able to track that open and make sure that we are seeing everybody who opens it. Um, and we do this by applying a custom tracking pixel that's, a, that's provided to you by the marketing cloud. And um, you can see on the um, right-hand side here, I have a little um, image that shows you where you can find the uh, tracking pixel in your snippets um, in Content Builder. Um, this tracking pixel uh, works just the same way all of your images do. Um, when we talk about a tracking pixel, a lot of people get confused with the new GDPR laws and things like that. Um, they often think that it's a cookie. It is not. Um, this tracking pixel is literally just an image. And what Salesforce Marketing Cloud is looking for is that image to be rendered in the ISP or in the inbox service provider of your subscribers. When that image is rendered, it's counted. Every time it counts, um, it sees that, that image um, rendered or, or called from the uh, server. Um, it counts it as an open. Um, so because of this, if people have their images off, uh, you won't get count, you won't 
that image won't be rendered and so it won't be counted as an open so you won't have an open metric for that subscriber if they have images off or if they're viewing it in like an apple watch or a, a device that doesn't allow for, for images to render um, so because of this it's not technically a cookie it's not actually collecting any data from that subscriber inside of the inbox so we're not um yeah it's not a cookie um, but uh, <laughs> what it is is just an image so um, best practice is to place this image or this custom pixel at the um, top of your email just below the body the opening of your body tags um, and this is because if your email is above 102 kilobytes in weight not including the images um, Gmail will clip your email and it might clip off the image uh, tracking pixel or the uh, open tracking pixel um, causing um, your metrics to be skewed um, and it you know not render uh, you won't get an open for that so if you put it at the top you don't have to worry about Gmail clipping your your tracking pixel off the bottom of your email um, talk briefly about false positives and vanity metrics I mentioned false positives a second ago um, if images are off or if um, they're viewing it if your subscribers are viewing it on a um, your emails and advice that images uh, can't be rendered um, then it, you will not get counted as it, an open will not be counted um, because of this it's considered opens is considered a vanity metric um, it's not considered a static um, metric that can tell you exactly how your um, emails are performing it's just a kind of a high level overview um, to see that people are engaging with your with your content with your subscribes all right so the next thing that can be tracked is clicks all right clicks of course are the big one where you want to track as many clicks as you can in the marketing cloud this we're going to spend a few minutes on this there are, there are multiple different ways you can track clicks um, um, the uh, the the best well there's not really one best way to do it um, like I said the both multiple ways to track clicks it is always um, best to ensure that all your trick clicks are being tracked in the marketing cloud um, and they should be at time of send if everything is set up right by your um, admin um, so what happens at time of send is the marketing cloud will wrap your uh, links in a click tracking um, tag um, what this does basically is it it upon click whenever a subscriber um, clicks in one of your emails it will send them that subscriber to a redirects them to a landing page where that click is counted by the marketing cloud and then they are redirected to the final destination of the um, the href um, that you assigned um, this is old school click tracking and you can um, you can enable this and do this on your own but why do it on your own when the marketing cloud does it so efficiently for you um, so you basically uh, your clicks are tracked by the marketing cloud there are easy ways to um, gain extra insights from your um, clicks by adding uh, alias tags and tracking parameters we'll talk a little bit more about tracking parameters a little bit later on um, alias tags are friendly link names um, so that whenever you're pulling reports from the marketing cloud from the back end instead of seeing the full URL string with all the tracking parameters applied which can get rather long I've seen some pretty long ones in my time um, you can get this friendly link name in your reports um, that is applied in your alias tags um, and um, and um, it, instead of seeing this full URL string which makes it a lot more manageable whenever you're sending your reports to your analytics team for um, post and send analysis um, all right so one thing about um, alias tags um, you sh there are two ways to apply them um, one is hard-coded by just applying um, an alias tag to your um, to your URL alias equals and then the tag name or you can drive them in dynamically if you drive them in dynamically using AMP script though warning this is a hack um, this is not supported by Salesforce marketing cloud so if you do this technique here and call for help call support for help they are going to tell you this is set up wrong and you're going to need to correct this alias tags cannot be driven in dynamically however if you break the um, I would say quote break the um, the tag itself and rebuild it with a concat function you can drive in um, variables into your alias tags um, which makes it easier to apply them um, at time of ascent in the long run for your 
uh, templated solutions. Okay, and again, this is a hack. So, um, like I said, default, the um, SFMC automatically wraps all links at time of send, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, let's talk about false positives real quick for virus scanners. Um, if you see an email that has been scanned, or you will know if it has been scanned, um, it, because every single um, link in that email will be clicked, will be um, counted as a click in your reports. Um, you can start to recognize the domains that scan for viruses like that and build your own suppression list so that you can um, query those out um, in your reports um, in the long run uh, whenever you recognize the um, domains that are using virus scanners. Again, Jenna, that is, yes. Jenna, I think that's probably why we, we recommend not to have the unsubscribe, like one click unsubscribe link anymore. Um, you know, I'm not going to recommend to to use that or to not use it. Um, the uh, virus scanner won't actually unsubscribe your your subscriber, um, but um, it it just it just clicks it. Um, it won't actually um, pass them through this unsubscribe process. Um, and uh, actually, let me let me double check that. Gilda, can can you double? Am I speaking out of turn here? Wait, can you repeat that again? Um, whenever a virus, the one click unsubscribe mm -hmm. for virus scanners, it doesn't unsubscribe folks whenever um, the marketing cloud recognizes certain URLs that have uh, virus scanners that associate, that are associated with them and will prevent them from unsubscribing. Um, um, Automatically uh, unsubscribing, yeah. yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, there you go. Um, Shibu, that's that's why you can still use the one click on subscribe. Awesome, awesome. That's good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for asking that. All right. But yeah, so watch out for those. Um, not all of them are recognized by the marketing cloud. So if you do see one in your email stream, you can reach out to support and let them know that you found another URL that has a virus scanner that's um, causing issues. Or you can build your own suppression list and suppress those um, so that you don't have to worry about them. All right. Next off, we're going to talk a little bit about um, impression regions and conversion tracking. All right, so impression regions. Impression regions are pretty neat, um, in my opinion. You can get a lot of information out of impression regions um, and uh, if, if used properly. Um, this is impression regions are tracking your content or images or um, whole blocks of templated um, sections. Um, in your emails. Um, you define these uh, impression regions using an AMP script or using AMP script functions to open and close those um, areas that you want to track in your reports. And um, you can nest these impression regions, but make sure you close, you use that close impression region uh, function. Um, or if you are nesting impression regions in your templates, uh, the system will get confused if you forget to use both the open and the close functions to define your regions. Um, you can also drive in variables into impression regions. Again, this is a hack. This is the same hack for um, your clicks. Um, it's the same hack for, um, that was seen here, except this is done with impression region instead of with alias tags. You pull it apart and bring it back together. And I provided a link. Um, to that um, on the AMP script guide, which Adam Spriggs has provided a nice little uh, example of how to um, drive in variables into those um, impression regions dynamically. Um, so you can go there and check that out. Um, again, though, it is a hack. It is not supported by Salesforce Marketing Cloud. And if you call them for support and they see these dynamic impression regions in your, um, in your emails that aren't done with the dynamic content blocks, um, because you can define an impression reason using the dynamic content blocks and content builder as well. Um, then they will ask you to do that instead if, if they see you doing this with AMP script, um, if you're doing this hack here with AMP script. Um, however, you know, that's up to you. Um, <laughs> that's the part of the fun about using the marketing cloud. We get to hack the system. But yeah, so impression regions are very, very helpful. Um, you, like I said, you can track entire um, sections of your template to see how um, subscribers are engaging with them. All right, conversion tracking. 
uh, conversion tracking is also very helpful. Um, it's probably the most helpful form of tracking there is if it's configured properly within the marketing cloud. Um, conversion tracking is your, um, your click path, um, your final destination, your, um, your purchase. Um, it, it shows where that subscriber ended after they clicked from your email all the way through if applied properly to their final destination for instance a purchase if it were like an abandoned cart email um, and it could show you could show that purchase inside of the marketing cloud you do have to turn conversion tracking on um, this has to be configured on the website that you would like to see the conversions take place which includes either a little php javascript or um, um, uh, well, a PHP or a JavaScript uh, solution that, that will send the information back into the marketing cloud. So you will have to work with your website's developer in order to get this um, set up properly. Another way to apply conversion tracking is on um, cloud pages. You can set up your own. Again, um, it depends on what your, your action is that you want your subscribers to take in your email and how you want them to convert as to how you want that tracked. So um, just think that through. Um, and um, um, you know, that could be um, a fun little project to implement with you and your team for some cross collaboration. But yeah, think through, think it through and apply it on a slow basis and can really gain some insights on what your subscribers are doing and how they're interacting with your website. Okay. All right, bounces. Bounces are very important. Um, I think they're often overlooked inside the market or inside of marketing in general. Um, so let's talk about the different types of bounces real quick um, and how they are tracked inside of the marketing cloud. Uh, first, hard bounces. Hard bounces are um, email addresses that don't exist, domains that don't exist, um, uh, send attempts. Um, uh, whenever you attempt to send, a server um, is, is non-existent or not real. Um, so hard bounces um, are immediately scrubbed from the marketing cloud at time of send or from your subscriber list at time of send if you're using all subs to maintain your bounces. Um, and uh, this is because that email address doesn't exist. Um, do not attempt to resend these. If you attempt to resend these, um, then it will affect your deliverability or your, and finally your inbox placement if you continue to resend to, to people who have hard bounced or to non-existent email addresses or non-existent domains. Block bounces. Block bounces are complaints. That's when people hit the spam button or the junk button inside their ISP, inside their inbox service provider. Um, authentication failures. This means that your DKIM, SPF, or your DMARC um, configurations are off and um, uh, you need to get those corrected. Or that you've been blacklisted. Um, blacklisted is um, definitely, if that happens to you, if you find out that you are on a blacklist, reach out to Salesforce Marketing Cloud's deliverability experts and get them help, uh, get their assistance uh, to help remove you from the, the blacklist. Um, block bounces, I would not attempt to send to again. Um, these are people that do not want your emails, um, except for the authentication failure. If you fix your authentication, if you fix your SPF record and your DKIM record or your, um, um, your DMARC um, configuration, uh, then you might want to attempt to send to these block bounces again just to see if um, you can get into their inboxes and they do in fact want your email. But if they complained about you or put you on a blacklist, do not attempt to send to them again. Um, that will damage your reputation and um, you, you might have um, inbox, uh, serve, inbox placement issues further down the road. Soft bounces. These guys are a little bit on the safe side. You can attempt to send these guys again. These, these are, someone has a full mailbox, they've um, inactive or an inactive or deactivated um, um, email address or account, they've turned it off for a few minutes, don't wanna hear anything from that, that account. Or um, you had some sort of, there was some sort of server error on the receiving side, meaning the server is there it just wasn't accepting messages at that time period. Um, so um, you, you can send to soft bounces again. Uh, 
but you don't want to send to them more than two or three times if they if the soft bounce fails more than three times then um, you do want to remove them from your streams because um, again this could provide this could uh, damage your reputation further down the line um, however uh, marketing cloud does allow um, you to manage soft or it manages soft bounces for you um, if you bounce three times i believe in a 21 day period um, depending on your send cadence um, those soft bounces subscribers will be removed from all subs or placed into a um, red shirt status um, rather than a yellow shirt status. They will be seen as yellow shirts while they're in soft bounce status until they've uh, met that threshold to be turned to a red shirt or to turn back to a green shirt. They can turn back to a green shirt if you um, if the if the um, email makes it into the inbox. <laughs> um, so therefore, it's no longer a soft bounce. It's considered delivered. Um, but yes, so bounces are tracked um, by the marketing cloud. Um, you know, immediately they're able to tell hard bounces um, and soft bounces. You know, at time of send, um, the uh, the cloud uh, receives a message back from the the server, or if the server's not there, of course, you know, it's not there. But if it receives a message back from the server saying that the mailbox is full or counts in the active or an email doesn't address or email exist, uh, address doesn't exist, and then it, um, uh, it will uh, change the status of your subscriber to the appropriate shirt color. Um, uh, block bounces, on the other hand, um, that's um, depending on the ISP, the inbox service provider. They all have different feedback loops and provide different information back to the sending server. Um, Gmail is notorious for not providing back full information about why the, the, the bounce was blocked. So you might not know that um, uh, you have a complaint or were placed on a blacklist. Um, and Gmail doesn't really use blacklist anyways, but you might not know that you have a complaint from, from Gmail. Um, so take that into consideration with block bounces. Um, if you do see that you have a block bounce, just go ahead and remove those from your, from your um, subscriber list um, because uh, the chances are um, you'll do more damage by trying to resend them again in the future because of the feedback loops, the, the availability of feedback loops. Okay. All right, unsubscribes and complaints. Complaints are what we just talked about a minute ago, those block bounces. <laughs> um, if someone complains about you, um, if you, if they haven't, if you, if they complain the first time, you'll get, if, if the server has a uh, feedback loop in place, like I said, Gmail doesn't, but uh, Yahoo, AOL does, um, well, they'll tell you that someone hit the spam button on you. If they complain about you one time, go ahead and remove them from your system, from your, from your segments, um, and uh, mark them as, uh, as someone you don't want to send to, opt them out. Um, because you don't want them to end up as a block bounce, which could damage your reputation further. If you send to a complaint a second time, it will come back as a blocked bounce. So um, just go ahead and remove those. Um, those people obviously don't want to hear from you. Um, unsubscribes. There are a few different ways you can unsubscribe from the system or your, your subscribers could unsubscribe. We talked about that one click unsubscribe just a few minutes ago, and that can be done at a global level, um, master level, or on a custom level. And when I say custom, that means um, you have data extensions defined and, that, and custom processes um, in place to unsubscribe your subscribers. Global unsubscribe means if you're using an enterprise level um, or an enterprise um, account, um, you um, or if you're using a corporate account, um, you, you're subscribed from all subs. Um, if you're using an enterprise account, you'd be removed from all subs at the parent level and then removed from all subs um, on all the child business units as well. Um, that is a global unsubscribe. It's a complete unsubscribe from your sending systems. A master unsubscribe would be an unsubscribe from just your master data extension um, or your master um, sending list. And if you are using all subs as your master, then of course it would be all subs. And we just talked about that custom unsubscribe process just a second ago. Um, that is up to you however you decide to impl implement that and configure that in your system but make sure you are noting unsubscribes and um, following data regulations and standards in your area for the unsubscribes um, unsubscribes are tracked um, 
just like a click in the marketing cloud, as we talked about just a few minutes ago, same with complaints. Complaints are, are fed in through those feedback loops. Unsubscribes are um, tracked just like a click. So if someone clicks on your unsubscribe button, um, they'll be passed to your preference center and allowed to unsubscribe there or with the one click unsubscribe, just as we talked to you a few minutes ago. But those are fed back in just the same way as clicks are. Uh, preference centers, I just wanted to mention this real fast because we just talked about this. Um, you, um, Salesforce Marketing Pro Cloud provides you with an out-of-the-box uh, preference center, an unsubscribe center, and a profile center. Um, the profile center just allows people to, to subscribe as well as unsubscribe from your preference center. You can build a custom preference center in cloud pages or on your external server, um, even in um, um, Commerce Cloud. And um, a, a, um, configure it to be um, associated with the marketing clouds and use API processes in order to unsubscribe your um, subscribers or um, AMP script if you're hosting your preference centers inside the marketing cloud to unsubscribe uh, your subscribers off them out whenever they're okay all right talking about Getting whacked out, talking about the Web Analytics Connector. Okay, the WAC is probably one of my favorite tools inside of the marketing cloud. Um, for a long time, this was not exposed to us. We had to call support and ask them to apply um, WAC strings and um, or um, open the support ticket and pass them the string that we would like to be appended um, for our Web Analytics Connector. You do not have to have an, a third party analytics tool um, to use the WAC. Um, but it is, um, if you are using a third party analytics tool, this is the way to connect to them. Um, of course, Google Analytics, Omniture, CoreMetrics, or any third party tracking tool is going to provide you or allow you to set up a series of parameters that you can track from your emails. Those parameters are applied to the tracking strings, or excuse me, not the tracking strings, the, um, the URL strings and your hrefs um, of your email. If you are using the WAC, those parameters are applied by the platform at time of send. You don't have to manually apply those tracking parameters. And now, because, um, like I said, you used to have to send the string over to um, over to support, and they would have those that string appended to all your emails at time of send. Um, now you can go into setup in the marketing cloud and a parameter manager under setup will allow you to set your own um, WAC parameters up um, so that you can um, apply and change those tracking parameters um, at time of send to the emails in, um, sent from your instance of the marketing cloud. Um, you do have to contact support to enable the, um, um, the tracking parameters, uh, the WAC to be able to be used inside of the marketing cloud or those uh, parameter um, manager to be used um, and think about how you're configuring um, parameters but the good thing about tracking parameters since those uh, that since they did since they have allowed us to be able to change those on the fly inside the GUI um, you can change them now if you if you make a mistake or if you you know um, uh, I like to say fat finger one or you know put in the wrong um, digit or something like that in one of your tracking parameters you can go in and change it yourself now um, if you are using the WAC, um, this will append all the parameters defined within the WAC to all email or to all clicks, all links, and all your emails at time of send that are going from your instance of the marketing cloud. Um, so that is something to take into consideration. If you want to use different tracking parameters for um, different emails, um, then you may um, then you may want to just apply your parameters manually rather than using the WAC. However, there are ways to quote unquote hack the WAC um, by um, you can um, drive dynamic variables into your um, tracking parameters um, that were configured with, with, with the Web Analytics Connector um, by using additional email attributes. Um, additional email attributes can be turned on. Those are um, parameter or attributes that you can apply inside of the, um, the uh, email properties pane in the uh, email configuration in Email Studio. Um, you can apply up to 99 of these. I've never seen a customer use 99 additional email attributes. They've maxed out at five, um, <laughs> which is how I would recommend it. Um, but you can apply up to 99 if you would like. Um, 
Additional email attribute can be applied as a personalization string inside of your um, emails um, um, with a concat um, string. And then that way you can go in and define what whatever parameters you want to um, track. Say you want to track um, you want to track the medium as email, and you want to define the campaign ID. Um, uniquely for this one campaign, but you want you don't want to have to go in and change the WAC every single time. You can set up your email template to have an additional email attribute, apply that um, campaign name to the additional email attribute inside of the track the parameters, and then the WAC will pick up that additional email attribute as long as you have it configured correctly um, at the time of send and drive in that variable for you so you can change those out easily. Um, you can do data mining with the WAC, which is really cool, in my opinion. Um, progressive profiling, um, as long as you have um, your links defined in a way that gives you a lot of information about what that link is, and um, uh, you can get additional information from it um, uh, and find out more about your subscribers by using the WAC and by using the data collected from the WAC. And yeah, don't be afraid to be innovative. Um, uh, you know, um, be inventive, be creative, don't worry about breaking things, um, get outside the box and see how you can use the LAC to um, really gain some insights into your marketing systems. All right, oh, I'm running a little long here, sorry guys move this along a little bit faster. Last thing we're going to talk, or two more things we're going to talk about real fast is data hygiene. We want to stay fresh and clean. Um, little caveat, CRM or Salesforce Marketing Cloud is not meant to be a CRM. Um, if you are doing, if you have a lot of data, you do want to manage it outside of the marketing cloud, um, meaning as in get yourself a Salesforce core account, um, service cloud, sales cloud, whichever meets your business um, um, model and um, use that to manage your data, um, clean your data inside of it, um, and then import your data into the marketing cloud and the data that you want to be used for your subscriber management and for your um, marketing campaigns into the marketing cloud from it. Um, it's easier to segment in a true CRM tool. Um, however, if you only have the marketing cloud available to you, that's that's another thing. If you have a small subscriber set, um, you know, totally understandable. Um, keep your data clean. Why do you want to keep your data clean? Um, we talked about GDPR a little bit ago. That's a big one. We have cam spam here in the States, but yeah. Um, and uh, Castle in, in Canada, and I'm not sure about many of the APEC regulations, but there are data protection regulations popping up all around the world. And we want to make sure that we're um, managing our subscribers appropriately and so and legally. Um, also, um, and opting them out when they want to be opted out. Um, deliverability and inbox placement. Um, your reputation matters. You have a domain reputation. You have an IP reputation. They are two distinct reputations that are considered at each send. Um, if you burn your IP, you can change your IP and get a new one, um, but you don't want to do that because if you have a good reputation, you will have your have high inbox placement, high open rates, high click through rates, high conversion rates. Um, if you burn your IP and, and practice bad habits and don't clean your data, um, then um, then you can end up with a bad bad reputation inbox in, and end up permanently in the spam folder. Um, if you if your IP becomes bad enough, you can destroy the reputation of your server, meaning your brand. Um, and that is, you know, um, that's a business asset that you don't want to destroy. Um, so it is a good thing to um, make sure that your data stays fresh and clean. Um, all right. And lastly, you want to keep your subscribers happy. You want to keep your customers happy and, and, and keep them loyal. You don't want to make them angry and, and have them kick you out of their inbox. This is one of the most personal forms of communication we have available to us. And it's one of the most effective. It has the highest R ROI. Um, so we'd like to, you know, um, Keep our subscribers happy and how do you keep them happy by making sure your data stays fresh and clean by, by making sure it stays as um, accurate as possible. Um, cleansing methods. Um, the marketing cloud provides several cleansing methods available um, natively, natively inside the platform. Um, contact delete is one of them. Um, 
I have provided a link here, check into that. Uh, make sure you're um, meeting the standards in your um, area. Um, bounce management, we talked about a little bit earlier, and suppression list, you can build suppression lists inside of the marketing cloud, auto suppression list and custom suppression list. Um, suppression lists are um, applied at time of send so that you can um, make sure that subscribers that um, have bounced, complained, or whatever the reason um, shouldn't be sent an email um, at that time um, can be applied to and suppressed from that send. Um, uh, there are plenty of email verifications and validation tools um, out there for you. Um, check App AppExchange. Um, there are, I, I can name three off the top of my head. Bright Verify is a um, email cleansing tool. They will check to make sure that the email address is valid and um, a real email address rather than a fake one. Um, you can set it up to do it at the time of send or you can um, use their um, tool in advance. Um, Return Path um, has a data verification tool and um, um, uh, management um, available. And 250OK, I believe, Inbox Pros has. Um, a data um, verification tool that you can use, the email validation tool. Um, and then there, of course, there's custom cleansing processes that you can play, put in place for your own system, um, whichever you choose to um, implement. And remember, um, your each brand is unique. You're going to have to do some analysis to figure out what works best for your subscribers. Lastly, there are lots of different ways to extract all this data out of the marketing cloud that, that just went into it at time of send. Um, we just tracked all this information. Now, how are you going to pull it out, right? Um, there's lots of different ways to do this. Um, first place, there's tracking extracts. Um, this is a data activity done in um, the um, on, um, Automation Studio. This is probably the easiest way to get your information um, aggregated for all your sends at one time um, and extracted to an FTP or um, a, to a data extension that you can then download to your, um, to your machine um, and pass this along. Um, there are several different ways to pull reports. Um, you can re pull reports from individual sends from the tracking screen on, um, in Email Studio. Um, or in Journey Builder. Um, from triggered sends, uh, you can pull those from the triggered send um, tracking area in uh, Email Studio. And then, of course, there's Analytics Builder, which allows you to create custom reports and uh, pull custom reports from um, the marketing cloud itself based on whatever you choose. Uh, my favorite way to pull reporting from uh, the marketing cloud is to access the data views using SQL uh, queries in um, Automation Studio. Uh, this allows me to, um, it allows you to pull the precise and custom measures um, because you can, of course, use SQL. Um, uh, marketing Cloud uses a Transact SQL, a T SQL. Um, so, uh, uh, take that into account. Um, whenever you're writing your SQL statements, um, you must start with a select statement. This is because um, the marketing cloud is, is already running a SQL process in order to query your data. You're actually um, in, you're doing a subquery whenever you're creating a query in the marketing cloud. Avoid using wild, wild cards. And the only reason I say this is because um, those data views, when I first started using them, had a lot less information in them than they do nowadays. <laughs> um, and um, I put a link in here and I'll just open this real fast so you guys can see. Um, there is a lot of information that you can get. This is the bounce data view and we were talking about those feedback loops. You can get the SMTP response and everything now. Um, that information wasn't available whenever I first started using the marketing cloud. Now it is. If I were using a wild card, if I'd set up a report um, or a query in Automation Studio using a wild card and um, uh, the data extension that I had that was um, created to um, catch the results of that query, um, if it didn't have the new um, attributes in there, um, it's not going to pull them. So if instead of using a wild card, just go in and, and go ahead and write everything that you need, all the, all the different attributes that you need to pull in that query. And that way, you know to go back and check it later on, or the system won't error out on you if, if, if one of these disappears or one is added. Um, all right. 
Um, you do have a 30 minute window with your queries. Um, so make sure, keep that, into, keep that in consideration. Um, you can limit your queries with date ranges. Um, you can also limit them with uh, modals using the custom object key. Custom object key is a hidden field on all data extensions um, that you can access. Um, it can be used for personalization and journey builder, um, but um, the, the, easy, the best thing to use it for is to break down your huge data sets. If you have a couple million subscribers and you need to um, break that into four or five, you can write a where clause um, that you know, um, looks at um, the custom object key, um, you know, uh, do a percent for the mode and um, of like three equals zero or something like that. And, um, and then you can um, pull just the, the, a third of that file. All right, and now we're on to, thank you guys so much. Um, I hope this has been helpful and please let me know if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them at this time. Yes, Andrea, we will be sharing the PowerPoint slides. So uh, it's actually the playlist, uh, the YouTube playlist. Uh, I'll just share the sh link here shortly. Does anybody have any additional questions? Yeah. Yeah. Can we have a demo of impression list and wake? Impression region example in the back. Uh, that is a great question. I would, do we have? Unfortunately, I don't have the one set up in mine. Uh, yeah, WSC, I've never tried that in, in mine. I only, I can see the parameter manager, but it's not editable for me. Got you. Yeah, you have to have it enabled. And unfortunately, I don't have an account that I can show it to you in at this time. Um, however, um, there is a link provided in the presentation to the documentation. Um, that you can see, um, find out more information about it there. Um, it, unfortunately, it doesn't show you um, what the WAC looks like, but basically the WAC um, just is a text area that allows you to go in and configure your tracking parameters very much like this. Um, this would be a, a, a tracking parameter. You would place your entire tracking string inside of that text area. Um, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have anything available set up to really show you exactly how to do that. But, um, um, but if you reach out, we can, we can certainly set something up, I'm sure. We'll take that feedback as in like we'll see it like if in future we can have a session where we can go into some details about that. Yep. Or maybe even publish an article, Jenna, on how to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. Uh, yeah, I need to get, do that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any other oh, questions? Thank you for. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, going once, twice. <laughs> okay, if we don't have anything more, like I think we'll wrap up for today. Uh, please do join back tomorrow and day after. We'll be covering marketing automation, automation studio tomorrow, and then day after journey builder basics. And that'll be the last session for the bootcamp. Um, so if nothing else, uh, we'll wrap up. Thank you very much, Jenna, for taking time and you know helping explain everything about tracking and reporting. It was awesome. Thank well, you for having me. Yep. Thank you. And good evening, good night, good morning to everyone. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Shibu. Good night. Thank good you. Morning. Take care all. Bye. Stay yep. safe. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Evening. <laughs>